Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering .conf18. Brought to you by Splunk. Welcome back to Splunk's Conf18. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host Stu Miniman. We're here in Orlando, day one of two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is our seventh year doing Splunk.conf. Stu, amazing show, a lot of action. Partnership is growing, ecosystem is growing. And we're going to talk one ecosystem partner, Gemini Data. J.R. Murray is here, he's the Vice President of Technical Services. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on. Happy to be here. Yeah, so when we first started, the Splunk ecosystem was really tiny, and it's just sort of growing and growing, and now is exploding. But tell us about Gemini Data. What are you guys all about? What's your role? Sure, so my role is VP of Technical Services. I manage our sales engineers and professional services consultants, as well as our managed services practice based in the United States. So what I do is I go through and, and help make sure all of those operations go pretty smoothly. And in terms of the company and what we do, we've got a couple different things that we work on. Uh, primarily our focus is around big data platforms and making them easier to deploy and manage. Uh, we offer a hardware appliance as part of that package and we also have an investigate software platform that we feed data into and it helps analyst jobs be uh, a little bit more easier and quicker to do investigations. And you guys started the company, what, just three and a half, four years ago, is that right? That's right, that's Back right. Back when big data was, it kind of still is, you know, a mess. That's right. right. And Doug even said that in his conversations today. He said, we, we live in a world filled with change, the messiest landscape is the data. That's right. And, and the bigger, the faster, the more complex the data, the messier it is. So you guys kind of started to solve a problem that's right. Why did you start the company? What was the problem you were trying to solve? So really where we started is we focused on, there's a problem with deploying big data platforms. Customers have poor experience in terms of it's too complicated, it's, uh, there are a lot of very technical details you have to worry about, and if you're a little bit lower on the maturity curve of technology solution implementation, uh, you might need some help along the way, or if you are a little bit further along in the technical maturity curve, you may actually need some help in getting something that's more turnkey in order to alleviate a lot of the challenges that go along with IT bureaucracy. You've got uh, maybe something that's, uh, that you need that's purpose built because you've got something that's very central to your security, strategy, you need to make sure that it's up and running and reliable and dependable. So uh, that's where we come in. We have a platform that we allow you to implement. It's a turnkey solution, um, multiple systems, get your Splunk deployment up and running. And, and will you do that on your website, looking at, you support various technologies. I see Splunk on there, FireEye, you know, Cloudera, ServiceNow, right. Amazon, Azure, so those are sort of Systems, RSA, I mean, they've got a lot of products, and in a lot of cases it's cloud, or they've got a platform like Splunk. Will you actually do like bottoms up stuff with you know, Hadoop and Pig and Hive, or are you really focused on sort of that higher level, helping customers integrate those platforms that they've brought in, right. kind of helping to be a platform of platforms, if you will, is it the former? Yeah, or the latter? so that's the idea, right? We come in and we go through and we say, what are your actual goals here? You know, do you just want to go through and, and install Splunk or do you actually have a big data strategy that we can help you execute on? So it's kind of a cohesive, holistic approach in terms of what you need to deploy and how we help you get there. So if you need to deploy Splunk, we help you install Splunk. If you want to do Splunk and have a Hadoop uh, data role, for example, you can have Hadoop just alongside your Splunk all on the same platform. You can go through and manage that centrally, uh, make it a little bit easier to manage via policy, uh, push out jobs centrally, all the uh, automation and orchestration is there and the underpinnings for all those solutions. Yeah. JR, who are you typically selling to? One of the things we look at, you know, data sure. is pervasive in the company, mm -hmm. uh, in, in companies, but who owns it? Uh, you know, I've, I've talked to a number of people at this company that like, well, right. I've got Splunk and everybody comes and asks me questions now. Right. Uh, so so where, where do you fit in the organization? So we got a few different things going on. So in terms of, who we sell to and where we focus, it's kind of across the board, right? We've got very large enterprises who are pushing you know, tens of terabytes into the deployment and we help them out with uh, getting a solution that's going to be something that's a little bit more manageable. You've got a limited staff, the knowledge of Splunk is, is hard, to, hard to actually um, cultivate and then actually keep and retain. Uh, folks that know Splunk, they are generally 
very well paid, so it's easy for them to find opportunities elsewhere. You've invested a lot in these people. Uh, your success is, is very critical and, and they're a critical part of it and it's important to keep those people around. So uh, we've got a, a managed service to help with customers like that. Uh, we call it Gemini Care. Uh, we come in and we are actually able to have an automated uh, monitoring and, and break fix type of resolution service that uh, factors into those types of deployments. And as part of that, we go through and uh, offer uh, you know, some services as touch points throughout the month to make sure they're getting what they need from a value standpoint. I mean, it's one thing to have the, the platform, the deployment, the data, but in fact, if you're not getting any value out of that, what, what good is it? So if you don't have the talent and the skills, you're able to go through and um, use us to implement some of those use cases and things like that. Yeah, one of the other things that's changed a lot in the last three, four years is, you know, on-premises, of course, is where a lot of customers are and yes. where a lot of data is, but public cloud, you partner with the Azures and Amazons in the world, and even if you start talking about edge, that diversity of where my data right. lives, how, how's that playing into your solution? So it's funny you mentioned that. We came to market, we led with an appliance-based solution. We said customers are having problems either getting hardware, you know, a common thing is you want to put a box in or 10, 20 boxes, but you've got the storage team saying, hey, you need to hook up to our, our, uh, our SAN. You know, we spent millions of dollars on this, we're going to get some use out of it. Guess what, Splunk, you're going to be our, our biggest consumer of all of our storage internally on this brand new SAN we got. Um, you know, a lot of times it's not attractive to a lot of internal customers. You've got IOPS requirements, you've got all these other requirements. You know, folks don't understand that you've got hard requirements for CPUs and, and the bandwidth there. So uh, if you're using virtual solutions, which a lot of customers are forced into doing, uh, you actually have a very difficult time getting reserved resources on those virtual hosts. So you get a bare metal box in there, you get our platform on it, you have none of those issues. Um, so in terms of where we've pivoted from there, you know, the industry is obviously going towards cloud. So what we're trying to do is actually, um, that we have a solution in the market today. Um, customers are really interested in us helping them on that journey. So we've got uh, plenty of customers who are on premise today, they have a cloud strategy, they want to get out of the data center business, and they need to get in the cloud. So what we're doing is we're helping them, we've got equipment who in a, a co-located data center, and what we're doing is migrating customers over to that infrastructure as more of a subscription basis. So it's the same platform, but now it's in the cloud. There are benefits to that. So, I want to. I want to actually. Let me follow up now. So the subscription basis. Right. How does that work? So it used to be what, in sort of an upfront perpetual license. And it then was. Here you go, and then we'll see you when there's another upgrade. Right. Um, and and now, how's it working? I know 75 percent last quarter of Splunk's, uh, uh, I guess, bookings or revenue. I'm not sure which one. Right. Were subscription based. Right. Radable. Um, and there was a big long discussion about whatever, it was 606 and all the Wall Street right. guys trying to parse through it. What does it mean for the, for the customer? What is that transition like? Okay. Is it, hey, good so, news. Right. You know, we're not going to go through these spike cycles. Right. We're going to smooth things out for you. Mm -hmm. But what's that conversation like? So we've got like? a lot of flexibility with customers. We've, we've got the ability to do uh, OpEx or CapEx. Uh, we've got the ability to uh, ship as, as an appliance, kind of an all-in-one. Uh, solution, however, what we've really migrated to as, as what the market has demanded is, you know, uh, customer feedback is, hey, we can buy this box anywhere, and we're like, you know what, you're right. If you want to, go right ahead. Here's a software subscription. So now we have the option to sell the appliance and the software subscription together as one package that's also, you know, partially subscription, uh, but what happens when you migrate that into the cloud is now you've got a cloud-based subscription infrastructure, and that software license is sort of included in that. Um, I want to ask you about use cases. We were talking a little sure. bit before, but if you pre, you know, go back before the term big data came, came to, right. to, to fruition. Um, you kind of had the EDW was the, the so-called data, big data use case, and you had maybe a couple of analysts that do the decision support systems and could build a cube, and they were like right. the data gods. So big data comes in and you had use cases like a cheaper EDW. That was kind of a, a, a really popular one. Certainly fraud detection was a one, precision marketing ad serving, obviously Splunk, Splunk in the security and IT operations space, although Splunk never really used the term big data, it's only sort of more recent. And line of business analytics. So you're seeing all these sort of new uses for data, very complex as you pointed out. Absolutely. You guys started the company to sort of help squint through some of that complexity, and actually build solutions. So, brief, the brief history of big data by Dave Vellante. So given, given all that, how have, has your customers' use of data changed um, 
over the last, you know, since you guys have started, and where do you see it going? So we originally started, um, you know, originally we, we had some customers that came over into this uh, new business venture, uh, existing relationships and whatnot, and they were using a different SIM platform. You know, one of our primary objectives were to, was to get them all into Splunk, and that's something that we were able to do successfully. So they were doing security analysis, log retention, and those are their primary goals and that's it. Maybe compliance, okay? So they're really focusing on that. Now today we're doing entirely different things. We're focusing on, as you mentioned, anti-fraud. Huge opportunity in the space there with Splunk. You know, the tools in that space today are prohibitively expensive, very complex, and we come in with Splunk, we're able to take in data from all sorts of places and technologies, um, really no, uh, you know, no understanding of the data at that point required yet, and then we convert that into business value for the customer by means of services. Because you know, there's very little in the way of pre-canned use cases for that. And frankly, when it comes to the fraud space, a lot of customers, their requirements are all different. Um, you know, there, there aren't really many shops that are very much alike at all. So you've got to sort of manage around that. Now, that's one way, but we're also seeing uh, folks who want to do executive reporting out of their Splunk data. You know, you're talking about being able to go through and do year over year reporting. Uh, you know, how are we doing from a risk management standpoint? These are the things that you're starting to see uh, trickle up to the C-suite in terms of what does that mean for us and the way we need to make these business decisions. So I understand that. So really started out kind of hardcore IT, certainly security right. use cases. What I'm hearing is Splunk is expanding into lines of business, actually using data in, in ways that you know, perhaps others were trying to do in the past, but not really succeeding. That's right. Uh, wh what is it about Splunk that allows you to do that? We heard a lot about 7.2 today, That's right. performance improvements, you know, some efficiency, your granularity of storage and compute, I'm sure the C-suite doesn't know or care about that, but right. being able to analyze more data is something that they probably would care about. Mobile is probably something that they care about. Absolutely. So what is it that Splunk's doing that maybe others you know, aren't doing or can't do architecturally or technology sure. No, a couple of things stand out uh, right off the top. So you've got the ability to scale, uh, you've got um, horizontal distribution of data, which means you can spread that load across many, many nodes. Uh, we're able to go through and distribute that load and it makes things actually perform. So we get an acceptable user experience and that means everything to a customer, right? So that's, that's one thing. Uh, the second thing is with Splunk, you've got schema at read you're able to pull in as much data as you want for as long as you want without having to understand that data. You can actually come back through later, um, you know, parse, interpret, report on, and get value out of that data historically uh, without necessarily having to understand it up front. Uh, that's, in my personal experience, been a huge impediment right up front to onboarding data with other, we'll, we'll call them legacy solutions, but there's still some in the market today that require and depend on that, is knowing the data up front. We can't pull in this data unless we know exactly what it's supposed to look like and can sanitize it, parse it into fields. So Stu, I want to follow up if I may. So, you know, a lot of people in the big data world talk about no schema on write or schema on read. Sure. And what they do is they toss everything into a data lake. The big joke is the lake becomes a swamp. Yeah. You know, they, they got to go and clean it up. Why is that not the case with Splunk? What's different about Splunk and that they're able to, I forget how exactly how Doug said it, but essentially structure the data when you need it. That's right. In the moment. I so think the difference said. with Splunk is that you're able to, you're able to foster and, and, and really pull together the community resources. You're more or less crowdsourcing how to parse all these data sources. Uh, you no longer have individuals at every given company with a very specific data source, say Windows event logs, that might be universal to many other applications and, and uh, organizations, uh, needing to roll their own. So you're able to socialize and, and share those things on a place like Splunkbase, and then suddenly everyone's able to, to really uh, capitalize on their data. So I see that as more of like a force multiplier. You've got the entire community behind you, helping you parse your data because they have the same data, and that's really what I think makes the difference. Whereas the so-called data lake would be like the, 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 the big data metaphor for a god box, where only a few people know how to get to the data, right? Basically, yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, and you know, the, the amount of skill required, okay, that's, that's another big piece, is when you're in Splunk, everything's very, very well documented. So if you need to write a search, it's, there are plenty of resources, you've got the you know, Splunk community, uh, you've also got all the documentation, you've got the quick reference sheets. It's not hard to get into. You know, it's hard to become an expert, 
But if you just need to do something very quickly, it's not that difficult. Well, it's, if we look at where Splunk's going next, you talk a lot about the AI and the ML, and one of the, the tensions you hear out right. there is, how much am I willing to let the system just take that action? So I'm, I'm curious on, on your product line and working with Splunk, what you hear, you know, how real are the advances that we're getting with AI, ML, and deep learning, and you know, are users ready to embrace that yet? Yeah, so that's a technology that's truly made leaps and bounds even over the past five years, right? So uh, what we're seeing is customers are able to use machine learning to go through and do predictive analytics and to be able to have the machine sort of speculate as to, you know, and you could say predict, but it's really, I think, speculation more like uh, what a given, say, categorical value might be. Is it yes or no, maybe for the answer to a question based on what those events say? Or is it, um, is there an outage coming up that potentially you can predict based on different values? And there are all sorts of applications for that and all sorts of platforms that are trying to do that. Now what Splunk's done is sort of bring that to the masses with Machine Learning Toolkit and made that a little bit easier to, to really digest for the common person. What they haven't done, at least until very recently from what my understanding is that they're doing, is they're actually taking more of that functionality, making it more intuitive, helping customers understand the most common challenges, I'll say. So you're really lowering the bar in terms of the amount of information, or, or knowledge rather, and skills to be able to leverage some of these more advanced algorithms and, and computing resources to go through and get the types of results you'd expect out of machine learning. Right. Well, J.R. Murray, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Really it's appreciate your time. Great Thank to meet you. you. All right, keep calls. right there, everybody. Stu and I will be back with our next guest. You're watching theCUBE from Splunk Conf 18 in Orlando. We'll be right back. <laughs>